Insert disc two. So, Aaron, we've got um, Capcom. They've already made a, a Street Fighter II cabinet, one-up cabinet. Yes. Um, but they've got a huge back catalog, over 150 games. Yeah. Um, you know, what What would you like to see, and what do you think Capcom should consider when they make a, uh, their their next one-up arcade machine? Because well, these things, these things are selling well. I have a feeling they're going to keep, they're going to keep turning, turning these things out. Are they selling well? Yeah, they really are. I, I mean, I, I've I, I've been frequenting the Reddit. Oh you yeah, know, the source of information. Aren't those people these, all crazy? They're crazy and accurate. Okay, they're crazy accurate. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, what do you think that Capcom needs to consider when they're building their their next arcade one up cab? Well, we if we're gonna do a cap if we're if you're gonna do a Capcom, we we discuss this a little bit. Um, I, I put it in two different categories uh, because Capcom games they have their vertical games and their horizontal games, and if you're going to do a cabinet, you're going to want to do games that have that share a similar button layout, similar controls, and a similar screen orientation. Now you say that when you say, "Oh, I definitely want the trackball one that definitely has uh, Crystal Castles and Centipede on the same machine." Right. Which are is a horizontal well, and a vertical game. I understand game. what you're saying, but I, I listen. I, it's just the way I think. I'd like to have it if I'm going to if I'm going to instruct Capcom. I wouldn't do that. So you'd, <laughs> you'd rather not have a classic game just because it happens not to be the monitor well, also, orientation that you want. Also, there's a, a, another difference. First of all, I'm, I'm not. Even, is, are you sure that Crystal Castles is a, is a horizontal? I'm positive. I don't. Even, I can remember since I played it. Um, hey, I, my my list, my rules. Okay. My rules are uh, okay. it's an all horizontal Capcom explosion. Okay. Tell you me know. your rules. Tell me. Tell me your thoughts. So, <laughs> I just picked out some games here that I thought would go good on a Capcom uh, machine with, that was with a horizontal monitor. Now, keep in mind also that I've steered clear of games that have licenses. Okay. All right. For reasons that are For licensing unknown to you. reasons. Now, I've heard that ca that they are on, on these one-up arcades. They're going to be doing. Uh, I've heard there's a Mortal Kombat one in the works. I've heard. Uh, a couple other ones that would probably be pretty cool. Uh, so, but I, I just don't see these guys wanting to pay for the licenses from like films and stuff. Because Capcom did a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of games you could put on a, on a, a machine. What from, licensed Capcom games are you thinking about? Uh, Aliens comes to mind. That's that was it. a popular Capcom arcade machine. Absolutely, it's it's a popular game. The Alien game. What? Alien versus Predator. I game. have never once seen that in an arcade ever well, dude, in my life. I mean, listen, I'm telling you, it's a popular. You're saying you were going shoot 'em up. Another one. I, I, me and my kid love to play Cowboys and Moo Mesa. That's a, that's a. Uh, that's a licensed game. Now, that's not a Capcom game, but I'm saying these are games just because you haven't heard about Capcom. This is such a... Here's another one. Another ca game that ca that is popular, a good cult game, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs Capcom game. Okay, I'll give you that one. Oh, so you'll give me that, but yes, not Aliens versus Predators? <laughs> and I also won't give you the Cowboys and Mesa, which is not a Capcom game. It's not, but I'm just saying it's a popular... I looked at games that were not licensed games. It because was they don't not, not a hard thing to find. Dude, they did a... Hey, that, listen, Willow was a Capcom game that was yeah, licensed. Yeah, classic. Some people like. Listen, your tastes are your own. People, some people like this stuff. I can't wait to hear your list. Okay. So here are the games I picked. Now these games uh, all have two. Uh, they all have two joysticks and each have uh, two buttons. So you'd be looking at all these games would be two. So players, another two buttons another things. thing you were looking at is having the same control scheme for all the games. That's right. Okay. That was because again. It cuts down on cost. Sure. It makes it simpler for the humanoids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna pick one, and then you can give me one of yours. We'll okay. go back and forth. Okay. So the first one I picked is pretty obvious. I went with Final Fight. Final Fight, great game, classic beat 'em up, side scrolling, uh, beat 'em up game. Um, it still looks good. It plays well. It's a fun game. And it's got yeah, people know what it is, uh, and it would probably be your top game on my list. Mm -hmm. If you've got, if you're going to make the cabinet look like one of these games, the cabinet would look like a Final Fight game for me. So what what did you pick as your tippity top? Well, I also chose Final Fight as my tippity top game. Yeah, I think yeah. that is the the most classic, um, you know, sort of <laughs> pseudo modern Capcom release. It defined the beat 'em up genre to a greater or lesser extent. The characters in Final Fight, you know, Cody. Guy, the chick, uh, they're 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 recognizable Cody figures. Cody Guy and Hagar. The, the chicks the, is the one that got kidnapped. Oh, okay. There's yeah, no Hagar. I was chick. thinking about Hagar. He's the know. best one. So, um, 
you know, they've continued on into different games and things. So Final Fight, definitely, it's got to be number one with Bullet. Right. So that was an easy one. The next one on my list, Knights of the Round. Great game. I used to play at the arcade back in Lexington. Uh, again, you pick your knight and you and you go out and fight stuff in like uh, in Arthurian times. Cool game, uh, uh, v- lots of fun. Two player simultaneous. You you run around with your swords, fight dragons and and stuff. Again, these none of these games reinvent the wheel. It's another side scrolling beat 'em up. Have you ever played Knights of the Round? No. Uh, it's a fun game. You used to play it all the time. I believe it actually supports some of these games. Support three players, but I believe. And I believe that one's one of the ones that supports at least. Now, what, what does what does Knight to the, Knights of the Round bring to the table that Final Fight doesn't? Well, it's a different type of beat 'em up. Listen, what is, what is the difference between beat 'em ups? They're all pretty much the same. Which is why I only chose one beat 'em up in my list. Well, I chose all beat 'em ups because I thought that was that was this is my beat 'em up cat. Okay, That's okay. That's what I'm doing. Okay, well, my second game was 1943. This is your classic vertical shooter, World War II. Capcom game. Uh, it pretty much, you know, this is the, one of the games that people think of when you think of what's a game where you're flying around and you're blowing stuff up. Of course, the first the first games you think of are the G- Galaga, Galaxian, those those kind of games. But if you think about a modern or a uh, a contemporary setting, a you know World War II, this is it. This is it. Nineteen forty three. It was everywhere. You still see it at laundromats everywhere. There's no you reason. Do? I haven't seen one of these in the arcade for decades. When was the last time you were in a laundromat? <laughs> well, I admit it. When was the last time you were in one? Man, I'm there all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. So, 1943, my next game. 1943. Definitely, you know, I, I can't imagine <laughs> shelling out 300 bucks for a cabinet that only plays one genre of game. I, I, this is my themed cabinet. Okay. You know. Go on. <laughs> what, is your, what is your third game? So, next on the docket, Black Dragon. The high fantasy uh, beat em up it's, again, not reinventing the wheel. You pick your character, you go around, you beat stuff up. Uh, this one uh, is not really like Knights of the Round. It's more of a, uh, I guess it's more of a uh, uh, D&D ish. I was going to say, does this one incorporate any of those RPG elements that the D&D games did? No. Absolutely not. Okay. Th- those came years. And, I, and for the record, another Capcom licensed game that would be great on a beat 'em up would be the D and D games. Mm-hmm. But again, I'm going on the assumption they're not going to pay for these licenses. I could make a list of right now of licensed beat 'em ups I'd like to have in. Alien vs. Predator would be on there. Both the D and D games would be on there right away. Cadillacs and dinosaurs would be on there. That would be a that'd be a tight machine right there. Uh, but again, play, I set my rules, okay. and the rules are no licenses, so I'd go with Black Tiger. What do you got? Uh, my next one is uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. This is um, a, a classic <laughs> platformer. I think it's the oldest game. Maybe 1943 is older. Um, but this is, uh, you know, you, if, you, if you have these three games, if you have Final Fight, 1943, and Ghouls and Ghosts, then you have a platformer, you've got a shooter, and you've got a beat-em-up. Yep. You're covering all your bases. Uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, notable for its difficulty. However, the arcade version, in some ways, is easier than its console version. So, plus, you can keep pumping quarters. That game it. is so brutally hard. I it mean, is. It's, it's very difficult. Hard. Um, so, my last, and I, I don't have a problem with that one. That one's good. Um, and also iconic, in a way. But, I mean, it, it, it's so hard that I wonder how much people are going to get, how much pleasure people are going to derive from just because of the difficulty. That's a fair point. Um, so the last uh, of, my, of my picks on the my horizontal beat 'em up cab is Battle Circuit. Battle Circuit's a cool game where you run around, you get in, you fight robots, you get in robot like mech type robots, and you run around and beat stuff up. Uh, it's got a little flavor from uh, Alien vs Predator, where there are parts of it you can do that in, uh, but it's it's different from the other games. It's, more, it's a science fictiony type world, but it's a lot of fun too. Uh, that one I would be my fourth and final choice. Now. I know what you're going to say, but well, go ahead and finish your things, and we'll define, have our final thoughts on that. Okay. So my last game is a puzzle game. Okay. Platformer, shooter, beat 'em up, puzzle. Is it Quiz and Dragons? It's not Quiz and Dragons, although that is a fantastic game. <laughs> Update um, all the and trivia <laughs> yeah. and sports data. <laughs> that, that would be great. Uh, this is Super Puzzle Fighter 2. This ties in with the Street Fighter 2 license. The Street Fighter 2 cab has been probably one of their biggest selling cabs in the arcade one-up thing. Uh, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 is a great puzzle game. It's got It features the kind of cutesy version, the chibi versions of the Street Fighter 2 guys, um, and it is a diamond-type puzzle game where you're dropping gems of different 
different colors and they're blowing up and you've got combos and things like that. It's a fun two-player experience and it's one of those games that even if you have somebody in your household or somebody comes over that's not a big gamer, they'll still get into it because they can understand how the colors work. You know, you match the colors and you, you, you do it harm just your enemy. I never Absolutely. liked this game. I never, I've never liked it. I've never been good at it. I, those two are probably connected. It just didn't do it to me. You know, I, I, it doesn't do. It's a lot like Bomberman. People love it. I'm mm -hmm. not bad mouthing. Don't get me wrong. It's a perfectly fine, reasonable choice. I'm just not good at it. And, and, and so your mileage may vary on that. I, I I don't like it. But I mean, people love it. And I think they made more than one. They're like the turbo yeah, or whatever. Yeah, there's the turbo version and the normal. So I don't know. So I guess my just a moment to talk about philosophies on these things. Um, your machine has definitely has probably more more notable games for people like us that have heard of games. But my guess is that the majority of these games, a lot of the people that would be buying these machines probably haven't heard of most of them. And I'm sure the games that are being sold out there now, except for the ones that have the bit like your Pac-Man stuff, I mean, if you look at the trackball game, uh, even the most prominent one being like, say, Centipede, a lot of people probably have no, I mean, think about how long ago it's been since that stuff came out. And I, we live in a bubble of people that know all about games and they uh, remember all these games from their youth. But a lot of these people that are that, uh, that are made bodies for their kids or something, I don't think the kids are going to know anything about it. And, uh, uh, and like for example, uh, on the on the vector game, you've got Major Havoc on there. A couple of those. like I would love to see the guy that had ever played a Major Havoc. I don't, I don't right. think I ever saw one in an arcade. I saw mm -hmm. it in a home you know collection. Well, I think the buying it for your kid angle is the same as it is everywhere, where I'm buying this for my kid, which is code for I'm buying this for myself well, and saying it's for my kid. When I say that, that's that sort of plays into why I made these selections. One thing that is, one thing about beat 'em ups, they've they've got one thing. All of them have one thing in common. They're all simple. They're all easy to pick up. They're all multiplayer, and they all are kid friendly. My kid will play, and this is where I got the idea for this. When we talked about doing lists. My kid will play any beat 'em up. We've tried them all. Mm -hmm. We've tried them all, and I think uh, if you get a nice broad selection of beat 'em ups, you've got and uh, you've got a bunch of them there. You've got a cadence that'll be fun. And now, is there an expiration date when you just get sick of running through these adventures over and over? Yes, uh, there is if if you played enough. But I think uh, uh, I think it would still sell pretty well, my opinion. So, and I think you your choices are good. Just the logistics of them again. There, I I was going for something that was. Yeah, it's the engineer in me, which I, you know, same orientation, same same joystick setup. So the, 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 just just so we're clear, the joystick setup is not an issue. Both yep. of these games are one or two button games. All right. There's no special controls, and there already is an arcade one-up cabinet with multiple monitor orientations. I, again, that's so cool. So the engineers in them, the ones actually making it, didn't see a problem with it. Listen, you found one game on one machine. I'm just telling you that you're not going to see horizontal games on the Galaga, for example. I mean, they're, they're not going to do it. Uh, 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 I like to have the screen be in the right orientation. That's just me. You know, most people are like me. I think. I think they are. Um, something I wanted to mention before we break off this is that somebody. I don't know if you heard about this, but I thought it was. I want to talk about the, the legality of it. I guess uh, some guy wired up apparently the uh, some of the uh, up one up arcade machines have points on them that are labeled for a USB port. And someone wired up a USB port, stuck a USB keyboard in it, and hit the tab button, and sure enough, the machine was running MAME mm -hmm. and MAME ROMs. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that this is way, way out of bounds. Uh, 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 the MAME is an open source project. You're not supposed to commercially sell anything on mm -hmm. it. So even if they... Uh, even if they bought the uh, ROMs, even if they licensed the ROMs uh, from, let's say, Namco or wherever, I don't think they've got any legal right to use MAME. What do you think? Maybe you're. Well, I think that the general rule with emulators is that they're not supposed to be used for commercial reasons. However, that's not to say that, like, okay, say that they are using MAME. Is the main legal team going to attack? I mean, I don't know if there's any sort of repercussions that can happen as a result of this. I don't think that the open source emulator community has much of a leg to stand on, considering the main use of these things is to promote illegal material being played on them. I think that uh, the main community and the main developers at large are probably going to let this one lie, seeing that the game developers of the Arcade 1UP uh, machines have paid license fees for these ROMs. So what you're saying is it's 
It's illegal, but it's okay. It's like speeding. You know, I, as I recall, uh, a few years ago, a gentleman copy wrote the name Maine. I'm sure that he did. And I, as I recall, there was litigation to make that stop, not happen. Yeah, did you hear about any of the results of the litigation? Yeah, he, it didn't happen. He did not. And I believe, uh, I'm trying to think what exactly happened with the name. So, I mean, there is some, there is, I hey, listen, some lawyer could take that case up and have a pretty decent shot. Again, who would he represent? How would it work? I don't know. About exactly. The, the, but I mean, I, we're both, neither Ma- one of us Mame, a Mame is not a company. It's not like Apple. It's I, a bunch of dudes in their basements. Well, the, listen, these are these are high level programmers and stuff. A lot of them that work on this. It's not like they're just a bunch of goofs out there. I'm not saying they're goofs, yeah, but, but I'm just saying. You're sort of deriding them. Well, these are a bunch of goofs in their bases. No. That's, but are, that's exactly these are who high, they are. No, these are high, these are some high level guys. This is just the side job they do. We don't know what they do. What kind of cheddar they got in real life? They might want to. They might want to call it. I'm just saying it's not necessarily the right thing to do. Listen, I hear this all the time. People getting on. Listen, remember when the Retrocon came out? It was using uh, emulation. It wasn't supposed to, and it was a big outcry. Is there, I'm just thinking there's probably going to be an outcry because of this. If there, if oh, I'm sure know. there'll be an outcry. I mean, you couldn't. You can't. Not a week can go by when there's not an outcry. Yeah, but this is a legitimate outcry. It's is like, it? I think it is. Yeah. I think these guys, you know, and the funny thing is, not all the machines run, you can't, that doesn't work on all the machines. Some of them have, apparently, like, uh, I believe it was Galaga, I'm trying to think of the other one. There's a couple that had, that, that, that ran had a custom emulation, they, they did it themselves. So, I don't know if these, the ones that are using MAME or their first batch that they did, or they changed over or whatever, maybe they got the message, I don't know. I still think it's interesting. It's definitely a story worth following. I just think that if you try to pursue serious litigation against whoever the MAME people are, I think it would end pretty soon because MAME is not an entity like suing an individual or a corporation is. I, I think they do have some legal recourse. I, I, I mean, I, the only reason I said it's because they've, I'm pretty sure that there's been some action in the past. Not to mention, man, here, but the, the, the bottom of the truth is why Why do it? You know, Well, they do it because it's easy. You know, and that's, you know, it, it's, it's kind of crummy, to be honest with you. It's okay for people to do this and get paid. Uh, uh, it just seems like a, a double standard on that stuff. I, I hate to see them get ripped off, and it happens over and over and over. I, the, the, you know, the, the PlayStation uh, Mini runs on an open source emulator as well. I doubt. I mean, I, you're not supposed. To, I, as far as I know, you're not supposed to sell see, this stuff. That's my point. And, and again, I don't know. I don't know the 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 exact legality because there are different kinds of open source licenses too. And so I don't know if you know one applies to all. Um, I really think that the you know the, the PlayStation, since the emulator itself is basically a reverse engineered you know Sony system, I don't know. I think that the the main guys and the arcade one up guys probably have less of a leg to stand on than Sony because Sony's basically saying, listen, you took the code that we had and reverse engineered it to work on a system that we never you know intended it to. Um, you know, we're taking it. We don't care because do, this is our code. I do wonder if there was a if a deal was struck on that one. Because I haven't heard much people talking about that. Maybe there was a listen. Maybe deals were struck. But listen, there's an end result to this that you haven't considered. Okay, and the end result could be could very well be. And this I've not heard anything, but I know if it was me, it's what I would do. Uh, in these two instances and in multiple instances, the hard work done by people has been exploited. And the people that did all the work, the guy that wrote the drivers for uh, the uh, Pac-Man or whatever the main was that they used, he didn't see a dime for this, all right? So what's the end result? You just stop work on emulation, be done with it. And if enough people do that, you you could pull out some of your best guys. You know, maybe your the emulation community suffers. Maybe yeah, so. Really, it's the only recourse that they have, yep. short of litigation. Yeah, you're, you're exactly and right. And they probably, if a guy said, listen, I'm sick of... Uh, I mean, this is a big corporation like Sony or, or whoever runs one of I'm sick of these guys making money off my labor. It took me you know, a year of hard work to get this driver running, so I'm done. What are you going to say to them? Say, thank you. I don't blame you. That's all sure. you can say. Yeah. It'd be fun to talk to one of these guys that worked on some of these drivers and see what they think. Maybe they don't care. You know, I don't know. Yeah. 